Welcome back. We are in Spain with Matt on the BMW S1000 R launch. Uh, we've been talking at length, and I do mean length, about the electronics on the bike. Can we move on yet? No. Oh, good. So, no, go on, what next? Okay, there's some that don't require so much uh, detailed explanation. Uh, it's a super bike. Would you like some heated grips on it? I certainly would. People are going to poo-poo with the idea, but heated grips, what? Sport old, bike riders don't old. ride in the winter? Well, probably. Did you ever use them on your GS? No. You big <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, how about cruise control? Yeah, That's good, good. OK, useful. yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you're riding to your track day or whatever, yeah. so it's got cruise control. Uh, and it's also got, because it's got lean angle sensors that obviously help with adjusting ABS and traction control and all that sort of stuff, um, it's got a little live figure on the dash that tells you what degree of lean angle you're doing. Just what you want to be doing in a corner, yes, looking down at your uh, dash, yeah. telling and you And it's got a telltale. So at the end of your track session, you come in and it'll say, oh, 58 degrees was your best lean to the left and 59 to the right or whatever. In um, your dreams, Sonny. I, I actually had 59. <laughs> I'll be honest, the biggest angle we had was Donovan Ferry from Bike Say magazine, who managed a 60 degrees, I think. Which is quite impressive, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so when you finish your ride, it tells you it's got a telltale there, and it's also got a telltale for exactly how much throttle retardation, in other words, how much the traction control has intervened. So you can say to your mates, look at that, I made it work fully, or not. There's a bit of a downside to all this, isn't there? Like you say, do you really want to be checking your lean angle um, while you're on the road? Nah. I think not. I and you really think... want to be going on a breakfast run, and all of you, all the way there, are trying to get the most lean angle, so when you all stop, you can go, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's a bit of a recipe for disaster, uh, isn't it? Yes, it's Anorak City, I think, here today. <laughs> can we actually talk about proper stuff, the looks of the bike? I mean, what does it look like? Have they changed it? Does it look better? What's... Well, from a distance, it looks pretty much exactly the same, but you wouldn't expect anything else. When you get closer, there have been some detailed changes. For instance, it's the headlight. You know, it's got one round and mm. one sort of winky uh, headlight. Well, they've swapped those round. Uh, I have to say one particularly lovely piece of kit regarding the aesthetics this is the exhaust. It's uh, brushed stainless steel, I think, but uh, it's very, very thin. Much thinner. You know, the standard exhaust these mm. days are big, huge things, aren't yeah. they? It's very, very thin. It's very raughty and loud. And BMW have thoughtfully... It's got twin exhaust at the end. <laughs> They've thoughtfully, a couple of little screws, you can pull that baffle all the way out Ooh. and turn it into a... And it looks like a race pipe, so turn it into a race pipe without having to go and buy an extra one, which can be 20 grand, 30 grand for a full system. No, they're, they're... Well, OK, look, the looks are not especially revolutionary or anything, but I did get a chance to speak to the designer, Matthias Kotman, and he told me about his own personal little favourites. <laughs> Matthias, your personal... If, if your father or your family member asks you, what, what little piece of the bike do you point out to them that you particularly love? Well, there are some spots on the bike. I mean, uh, first of all, like the one which caught your eye yes, in the, the first beak. is yeah. the beak, of course. Yeah. I think that is something really beautiful in combination with our still the split face, but with the massive air intake, which shows you right away here is really more power. It's it's screaming performance bike. The other thing, uh, the other detail I would point out is uh, this small. No, go ahead, show. We see here on the side with the with the small gills and how they factor up, and I think that's uh, it's a beautiful, um, um, I'd say, a, um, feature detail. or detail. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful detail. It's nice to see that a designer like himself is so obviously pleased with what he's done on the bike, and I can only agree with that. Quite interesting to know what he's working on next, though. Not really. I'm bored of this now. Can you give me a verdict, <laughs> yay or nay? Okay, verdict. <laughs> Previously. I think it's fair to say the BMW was the class-leading superbike, certainly the class-leading four-cylinder superbike. Kawasaki ZX-10R is the only one that's come close. Now the engine and the chassis is better. The electronics package makes everything else look like a dinosaur. And without even riding the other bikes back-to-back, -back, I'd have to say that the new S1000 RR absolutely kicks every other competitor right in the gonads. It's the best superbike out there. Blimey. OK, from new bikes, let's move on to older bikes. You've been running this Triumph for knocking on four months, I think, now, Harry. Uh, how's it been going? I love this bike with all my heart. The time has come to say a very sad farewell to this long-term bike. I'm, I do fall in love with my long-termers, I know. 
and I don't want to give it, give it back. Fair enough. As we found in the Pirelli Bike of the Year competition, which we ran recently, the naked bike or the naked sports bike is coming to South Africa, whether the market likes it or not. There is going to be a huge choice of models, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that good old stalwarts like the Speed Triple are kind of outmoded or even outclassed. This is possibly one of the best sports bikes I've ever ridden. Maybe I haven't ridden that many, but I love it so much. And it's, you know, while all the other, the new bikes are getting all the headlines for stratospheric horsepower and electronic gizmos, this is one of the last remaining analog sports bikes. I, it, it just doesn't have the electronics, it's got ABS, but that's pretty much it. You get on, you start it, you ride. That's all well and good, but part of owning a bike, surely, is loving the looks of it, and, um... What are they? Those that's are... not headlights, that's some kind of insect mutant yeah, stuff. Look, it is a controversial styling feature, but we all know that <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and it's... This... Well, fair enough. I mean, look at you, look at that. Moving on, it's a bit of a <laughs> not like you. <laughs> I won't slag it off anymore, because... Well, you like just, this. Yeah, you I know. actually like this. And, it's, and because of the engine. Tell us about the engine. The engine. I mean, it's, this is Triumph's trump card, this beautiful three-cylinder engine. It's meaty, it's talky, it's got a fantastic soundtrack. It feels absolutely unburstable. The gearbox, they've, they've revised the gearbox for this model, and it's a bit chunky and clunky, but it's still, it feels solid. It's not going to let you down. The whole bike, it's got this chunky sort of meaty feel to it. You know, it is a bit heavy, fine, but you sit on it and the weight's very low down. It's a comfy bike. You know, the, the seat's lovely, the reach to the bars is perfect. So much praise from just the one mouth. How much is it? Uh, around about 160... But that's the R version, remember, That's the it? R version. The, the standard, I think, is around about 139. Yeah, which, in my personal take of it, take the standard one and, and save yourself the money, because it does 99.9% .9 of the job anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, but look, with the R, you get some fancy carbon fibre, you get the Olin's monoblocks, you get... Uh, Bre sorry, Brembo monoblocks, the Olin's suspension. Do you really need it? Maybe not. It looks spectacular, though, and, you know, in the ballroom bragging stakes, yeah, you can see... I'm, I'm I'm pretty much guessing that you'd be able to give a firm recommendation to anyone thinking about a naked sporty bike. I would, I would unhesitatingly recommend this. OK, like I said... OK, well, all right, all right. <sighs> if we're coming to honesty stakes, what's got wrong with it? Must, something must have fallen off or something's gone wrong somewhere. Really, really, if I have to dig so yes. deep, there's no gear position indicator on the dash. OK. And when you fill it with fuel, if it's, if it's yes. on empty, you fill it with fuel, you have to ride 100 kilometres yeah. before it starts registering full, which is... Same on all the Triumphs, it's really weird. It's really, but that, honestly, 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 is the only thing I can find wrong with it. Well, firm recommendation. We've seen the new bikes from Intermot, we've seen a brilliant new superbike from BMW. Harry is firmly, firmly recommending the Speed Triple to anyone who's into their naked bikes. We'll be back next week. Got no idea what's going to be on the show, but I'm pretty sure you can guarantee... <laughs> There'll be some motorbikes.